Hello. Good afternoon. So today we are looking at fungi, fungi the microorganism, not a fungi yet. So let's move on. <laughs> what is a pathogen? So pathogens are microorganisms that cause disease. They range in size from microscopic bacteria and viruses to parasitic worms that can grow up to several meters. If any of you have been watching the video previously about bacteria and viruses last week, then you'll know it, what the definition of pathogens it sets and their transmission routes. So, looking into fungi. Fungi live everywhere, outdoors in the soil and on plants, in the air, indoors and naturally in our bodies. There are millions of species of fungi, but very few cause disease. They can infect anyone, but pose the biggest threat to people with weakened immune systems, such as cancer or HIV patients. Moulds, yeast and mushrooms are all types of fungi. Right, regarding mushrooms, right, I know some people have a tendency, you know, to like, what is it these days, smoke shrooms? But I highly recommend you don't. Yeah, especially if you find them in the wild, because they will cause you a lot of problems. But yeah, some people find this quite fun. Anyway, so, what is mycosis? Mycosis is a fungal disease caused by infection and direct damage. Systemic mitosis is defined as fungal diseases which spread to internal organs. They usually enter the body through the respiratory system. And the final type of mitosis you need to know is opportunistic mycosis. Fungal infections which are common in all environments and they normally only cause disease in immunocompromised individuals. What does that mean, immunocompromised individual? Someone whose immune system is weak, doesn't function as normal people's, you know, that might be due to like a disease. Leukemia uh, might be due to HIV, viruses, etc. You know, there's just the uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system is compromised. So, fungi can cause disease by attacking and colonizing a host's tissues or through the production of toxins. Some individuals can develop hypersensitivity to mold and spores and can develop allergic reactions. What does hypersensitivity mean? So, hypersensitivity means you become increased levels of sensitivity, so you're more likely to react towards it, you know. Many fungal infections remain superficial. They infect the skin, hairs, and nails, but really spread to underlying tissues. So you'll see it on your on your skin, hairs, and nails, but it won't go to your underlying tissues. They can cause different types of diseases, such as infection in skins or nails, and they can secrete extracellular enzymes that break down keratin, and this can be usually treated over over the counter medicines. For example, let's have a look here: athlete's foot. What picture on the right hand side? Common fungal infection affecting the feet. You know, you'll see it in your foot as well. You'll see this yellow, yellow type, etc. So, opportunistic fungi are fungal species that present in the environment or, or part of a normal biota, but can cause infections in immunocompromised individuals. Let's have a look at an example here. Eh? Right? You have Canada SP, a common member of natural biota that can grow unchecked and, inv and infect the vagina or the mouth known as oral thrush. If the pH of the surrounding environment, the person's immune system's defences or a normal population of bacteria are altered. Patients of late stage acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, also known as AIDS, are quite prone to opportunistic fungal infections such as Cryptococcus neoformans. Why are they opportunistic? Because think about it, if you have a weakened immune system, then these things are more likely to attack, there's no defence mechanism in place. Fungi can also cause more serious diseases when they spread to internal organs. So they can enter via the respiratory system and cause lung infections. So another example is, is mycosis, otherwise known as valley fever, which is commonly found in the southwestern United States where the fungus resides in the dust. Once this is inhaled, the spores develop in the lungs and cause symptoms similar to tuberculosis. Remember, tuberculosis is called by a, caused by a uh, organism called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It's a cat, le cat free level pathogen. Fungi can occasionally cause meningitis. And this is rare and occurs when fungal infection leaves the bloodstream and it enters the spinal cord. And this is happens in stuff such as Streptococcus species. Now, moving on to parasites. So, parasites can be free living or parasitic and go through several life stages. Free living means an organism that is not dependent on another being. Or parasitic means an organism that lives on in another organism, the host where they cause disease. So, parasites can be divided into protozoa, helminths, and ectoparasites. So, ectoparasites, you can see on the right hand side here, 
your microscopic single celled eukaryotes that live and multiply within the host. Then you have helminths, which are large multicellular parasites, more commonly known as parasitic worms. They are generally visible to the naked eye. Now, the thing about these parasitic worms is, they, is if you ever go abroad to a different country where the water isn't so clean or the food is contaminated, etc., these worms can actually end up in your body and you'll see them in your feces sometimes. I know it's disgusting, but you'll see here that's an example of a helminth. And then ectoparasites, these can mean blood sucking arthropods. And it is used to describe organisms that attach and feed from the skin, usually for a longer period of time. <clears throat> Looking at protozoa, these can be either free living or parasitic. So free living doesn't depend on another organism, parasitic depends on another organism as a host. And these are divided into four different categories based on how they move. The amoeba, the flagellates, the ciliates, and the sporozoan. So the amoeba creep or crawl over surfaces. Examples are entamoeba, the flagellates use a flagellum. Such as, such as Giardia or Leishmania. The ciliates use numerous cilia, such as para, Paramecium and the Sporozoan. Adult stages are not generally mobile. An example is, is Plasmodium and Cryptosporodium. Just a little back, background information. The, if you've heard of a... If you've heard of a disease, Malaria, this is caused by a Plasmodium falciparum. Yeah, Malaria. Mosquito bites. So let's have a look at uh, Plasmodium, the life cycle here. You can see there are many life cycles here, right? I wouldn't say you'd have to learn it all off by heart. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't usually learn it off by heart, but these are the steps if anyone's interested in how it would happen. You know, it's quite a good wee diagram here to utilise, showing the infective stage and the diagnostic stage. I'll leave you guys to have a look at it yourself and not try and get a grasp of it, you know. But uh, yeah. So mosquito bite, the mosquito stages, the human liver stages, and the human blood stages, what's happening in each step. <coughs> Moving on to helminths. These are parasitic worms which infect all types of animals, including humans. There are three types of helminths. Tapeworms, flatworms, also known as flutes, and roundworms. So tapeworms, you have the tania species. Flatworms, you have the schistosoma species. And roundworms, you have the ascaris species. So this, this slide is now looking at the systoma life cycle. Once again, you can see here the different steps. The eggs are shed from the infected human. The eggs uh, hatch and this release. And then it penetrates the small tissues. You have the sporocyst developing. And then moving on, eventually this results in adult worms, etc. You know, so this is a full cycle. If you have a look at this, of the infective and diagnostic stage of what's happening in the schistosoma life cycle. But as I said, this can happen by eating contaminated food or water if you go abroad and it's not clean, etc. So let's have a look at specific species here. You have Plasmodium, Protozoan, causes malaria, as I said before. How does it, how does it occur? Mosquito bite. You have Ancaphamoeba, which is also Protozoan, results in keratitis. How does that happen? Contaminated water. You have Leishmania, which occurs via a sandfly. Tipsonoma, which is occurring by, which results in tips, tip panosomiasis, occurring by the tetsetse fly. Tetsetse fly. You have the tenia tapeworms, which is teniasis, occurs via eating raw or undercooked infected meat. You have flatworms, cystosoma, which is an helminth as well, which occurs via water contaminated with cesarea, usually in rivers or lakes. And you have roundworms, ascaris, which, which results in ascariasis, which is a result of contaminated food and water or soil, you know. So, in summary for today's video, parasites and fungi are eukaryotic pathogens. Fungi are present in the environment as part of a normal biota. They commonly cause skin and nail infections, which are easily treated. They can also cause serious disease when they spread to internal organs, especially dangerous for immunocompromised individuals who have got weak immune systems. And parasites can be divided into protozoa, helminths, and ectoparasites. For people studying biomedical science, biochemistry, this sort of stuff, they find a lot of this stuff quite boring, especially the fungi stuff, you know, and the helminths. But this is sort of stuff, it's the sort of stuff you need to know as well, especially if you're looking into immunology as well in the future, you know, because immunology, uh, I'll be doing videos on that soon as well. But you have stuff called the TH1 response, TH2 response. I mean, the body responds, etc. And these are the sort of things you need to know about different organisms, what sort of response they have. You'll hear about this stuff soon as well. 
MHC Class 1 pathway, MHC Class 2 pathway. Anyway, that's the end of today's video. I hope you've had fun enjoying this and re watching this. Please do comment below, like, share and subscribe. And also, let me know any ideas for future videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.